Might as well just rip the band-aid off now and keep it real. I dislike most commentary channels. Before you begin to cry and arm yourself with a blue yeti and stolen footage, I should state that I don't dislike the entire genre, just most of it. I couldn't say that I dislike the entire genre because if I did, I would then be a liar due to some of my biggest influences once being a part of the genre at some point. But the majority is pretty mediocre and bad. Today we're going to be talking about a specific area and a specific type of video idea I've been wanting to do. Due to my timing though, I've missed a whole bunch of fucking evidence. This video was uploaded in 2016 and I was 14 when I made it. I made a commentary channel when the genre was starting to rise with Leafy and Pyrocynical, but it went nowhere because it was fucking awful. Yo, what's up everybody, it's Boba. I state this because when looking at small commentators, I can relate to an extent, so take this with good faith when I say a lot of the content you guys make is not as good as you might think it is. Fuck you, Cavus, honestly, fuck you. Why the fuck would you do this? But while this video is focused on me dropping my two cents, the main intention is still criticism. Unlike 2016, it seems that a lot of these channels have developed egos and extreme levels of confidence for D-tier level work. I don't like Dream's content at all, and I think it's just really bad. I think his stands are really bad. I think, like, a lot of his stuff is bad. Manipulating kids is bad to choose something so he can win. It's just a lot of things with Dream I do not like. Alright, stop. The video being presented is by a small YouTube commentator named Kane and was uploaded on November 27th, 2020. I don't know this person. I'm willing to put a thousand dollars on the line to bet that they're a child, so I should clarify. This is an example for criticism. Nonetheless, this video is fucking awful. It's three minutes of nonsense on a topic he clearly has no passion for. I don't judge the video because it's made on Dream. I judge the video because it has nothing to say that's interesting or informative. There's a a lot of videos like this though, such as this video on Corpse that was made by a channel named Lil Man. It's like overrating him in general, like, oh my goodness, Corpse the best ever, and saying like they've been a Corpse fan for years. Aight, that's enough. Once again, this video isn't good at all, but if you look at the rest of the discography on this channel or those surrounding it, you start to recognize a pattern. Maybe I'm just wrong though. Of course, of course these small channels have to make these videos on Corpse Husband and Mr. Beast. It has to be because they have genuine points to make. It can't be because the channels being discussed are big with followings that would definitely give them a burst of traction. But for real, it may makes sense analytically. If you point your finger at the top dog and say anything against the norm, you're gonna turn some heads. But when your video could be summarized in a tweet, that should raise some red flags. The only point made in this video is that he doesn't like Mr. Beast because he finds his content repetitive. Which is definitely ironic given that most people in this genre tend to give the two cents on everything. A popular YouTuber could fucking sneeze and 10 videos already made. That's not my cup of tea just because it's like geared towards younger audiences. I feel like because like it's kind of like repetitive. I don't know. This point about Mr. Beast, which isn't even a point really, it's just an opinion was made in 15 seconds and the rest of this two minutes and 45 seconds is him just beating around the bush with this loud music bad mic quality and this annoying ass little fucking subscribe green screen that takes you every 10 seconds like a mosquito but i digress most of the community have lazy takes on lazy topics dream sucks corpse husband is overrated dream's fan base is annoying that goddamn pokey man i can't believe what you did this time of course you could have these opinions all you want but it doesn't make you immune to criticism making a video ranting about a popular youtuber where you say nothing but regurgitated statements clearly shows how much interest you have when making the video okay Hey guys, how are y'all doing? Welcome back to the channel. Fucking Christ. And on top of that, the technical aspects of the video are bad. It shows the acceptance of mediocrity and how much effort the creator is willing to put in on the topic they care so deeply about. Mentally challenged kid here, and uh, I'm on Tokyo's channel today to talk about a retard that made a video on him. And if what, what the fuck? Can't even hear anything. The fucking music. You gotta be fucking kidding me. People are really being offended by a video game hairstyle in Animal Crossing. Now, for people who don't know what Animal Crossing is, it's kind of like a kid's version of The Sims. Thank God I know what Animal Crossing is. I had no fucking clue what Animal Crossing is. Thank you. Reaction commentary is bland. Doesn't matter if you have 800 subs or 8 million subs, it's fucking bland. Putting 3 minutes, 10 minutes, or even 30 minutes of gameplay and telling a quick hit piece without going in depth doesn't take any effort or creativity. So oh, Pyro's guilty, um, I just wanted to put this video out. It's 22 seconds! 22 seconds! What the fuck do you have to say in 22 seconds? They're saying his voice is sexy because it's deep. Like, if I just talk like this, uh, I guess my voice is sexy too. Never mind, we got a stand-up comedian here. No script either? God, basically Jesus, congrats. Wait. Ellen Page is now a man? I can't wait. I can't wait for this great informative video to tell me something interesting that I didn't know before. I really wonder what Cosmo has to say. So it is officially December, which in an annual tradition, I always play Dead Rising 4. I honestly don't know why I play this game, because I myself preferred the first game, even though it's a bit clunky by today's standards. As much as you might like that he's playing Dead Rising, I personally couldn't give any less of a fuck, so I'll skip to where the video starts. But I was reading through this micro essay that she has written, and I saw this word, I don't even know what this means, Latin X, Latin X, I don't know how you say that shit. In fact, it was so obscure, I had to look it up. Apparently, it's a gender new 
neutral term for someone of a Latin American origin. It's an alternative to Latino or Latina. This is almost as bad as the feminist trying to change the wording of woman. This video is a minute and 18 seconds, and the only point made is that he doesn't like the word Latinx. A fucking word. This is even long enough for a tweet. This is literally a thought bubble in your head. How do you manage to squeeze filler on a minute video? Wait, Pokemon did something bad? This is the first I've ever heard about this. I am so interested on what she did today. I'm practically fucking screaming. Yo, what is going on, boys? I have just came across a topic that blows everything into the water. Pokemon has been on this love and hate relationship with the internet. Time her name is brought up, there's always some sort of drama coming with it. And so far, this one's getting pretty juicy. If you've been on the internet for the last year, you'd know that there's something called the Offline TV House. This group of people consists of Michael Reeves, Lily Pichu, Pokemane, Disguised Toast, Saikuno, and Yvonne. Imagine the Clout House, but with only Twitch streamers that are mainly PG. A person by the name of Fed Mike- That's it for the examples. I think you get the point. I'm not a snob who sips rich wine, but don't give me dog shit and claim it's a cheeseburger. These videos contain nothing but plot summary that state the obvious while making coin flip jokes that could probably get a laugh out of someone who's schizophrenic. She's basically the new Nikocado Avocado. Did I mention she might have AIDS? <laughs> If Kanye West killed a kid, I don't give a shit that he ate breakfast that morning and then proceeded to get his mail on his Gucci slides. Tell me what I want to hear and give me your takes on the topic. Yes, some people who do this are successful to an extent, but when you throw enough shit at the wall, it's bound to stick. Doesn't make it any less lazy, though. If you truly have a gripe with something, put more effort in your argumentation and present it in an informative way. I'm Alex. If anyone deserves an expose here on YouTube, it's probably him. Before you make assumptions, let me talk. Jarb is a great content creator, and I'm using him as an example in a good way. This is a 16-minute video on I'm Alex that has great editing and a great script. Even though the video is made in After Effects and is visually pretty, that's not the reason why the video is good though. But let's put a pin in this, I'll come back later. Good editing doesn't just have to be saber effects and fancy transitions though. You youngsters out there, machinima, a combination of machine and cinema. This is a YouTuber named Zog. Wait, me, Zog, and Jarvis both made videos saying positive things about The Last of Us 2? Yeah, this shit's fucking rigged. Zog's editing isn't fancy or smooth, but it's still good because it's engaging and interactive. You don't need plugins and fancy transitions for the editing to be considered good. A three minute video that consists of chopped audio and stolen background footage is not compared to creators who put an effort in audio engineering, scripting, and video pacing. Not to toot my own fucking horn, but if this video was just me doing this without changing the frame or giving context on screen while I spitball my gripes off the top of my head, this video would be so fucking unorganized and boring. Being interactive isn't even that complex. Zog's video on Sam Gladiator is edited to keep your attention while he delivers his script. It doesn't linger on one frame for too long while showing context to what he's discussing on screen. It's not rocket science, it's just effort. And yes, his mic quality could be improved, but that's situational. If you're reading a script like a fucking robot, that could be fixed. Now, to unplug that pin earlier, Jarvis's videos aren't good because of his editing, they stand up because of his script. Story is good is a question too subjective to confidently answer, though I will heavily discuss it later. Like I said, anyone can abuse saber effects and have smooth transitions, but if your script sucks, your video sucks. Mama, I really don't like Dream, thank you. I think he makes bad. I don't like that he um, sells water bottle for 50 bucks, it's just really not for me. Even back then, YouTubers like Zaptai and Colossal is crazy weren't special for their editing necessarily, but instead for their delivery. He is literally just fat. There's reasons why YouTube YouTubers like Cordwit, Turkey Tom, Jarb, Zog, John Swan, and many others have respect or traction. That's because they put effort into making a statement or point instead of just chucking it at the wall. And while the editing from these creators are visually appealing, John Swan talking out of a ham radio calling Deji stupid for three minutes wouldn't be as impactful as the video he has now. A good video requires effort. When looking at the pyrocynical situation, you see so many videos repeating the same point and you wonder why Turkey Tom's video stands out. It's because there's effort to put into the video, there's a flow, it's visually grasping, and there's something actually interesting to be said. Am I biased to essay commentators? Yes. Absolutely. A video essay that goes into depth about the creator's thoughts is far more interesting to me than surfing footage stating that something is stupid or cringe. But hey, this is all just my two cents as an outsider looking in. No matter what, saying something about anyone is going to stir the pot, so sorry if you're pressed. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and share it. Or whatever. Imagine not being of age to drive. Couldn't be me. No oil tycoon. And if I'm gone to November, won't see my ass till next June. And it's true. In a broad daytime afternoon. Trying to spoil my mood. I'm trying to enjoy my cartoons. Bitch. You ain't have many friends, but you the shit to me. Bank broke. Every time you at the party, it's a scene. Bank broke. Always had to save you from a sucker thing. Bank broke. Lucky place always coming.